Chapter 12, Section 3, Measuring Process Maturity and BPM Maturity. When speaking of maturity, we have to distinguish two things. First, there's the maturity of individual processes. We already have seen that SAP defined such maturity for their own processes with an own model. At many stages, companies refer to the Capability Maturity Model Integration, CMMI. It defines five levels, from level 1 to level 5, ranging from initial, to managed, to defined, to quantitatively managed, and to optimizing. There is also BPM maturity. It doesn't relate to how well a single process works, but it refers to how well we do BPM. Level 1 is the initial level of maturity. BPM is not existing or rarely used. Level 2 is managed. The organization starts gaining first experiences with BPM and to build up BPM capabilities. Level 3 is designed. The organization reaps the benefits of its first projects. Level 4 is about quantitatively managed BPM. The focus is on BPM projects and the shift towards the last phases of the BPM lifecycle. A BPM Center of Excellence is established with well-defined roles that coordinate all BPM efforts. Level 5 optimizing is when BPM is fully established on both the operational and the strategic level. BPM methods are tools that are widely used and standardized company-wide. It is interesting to observe that in practice we see different patterns how BPM maturity is developed in companies. Let's first look at the blue pattern. These are companies that have high maturity in terms of strategic alignment and governance, but they are less developed in terms of methods, technology, people and culture. This is usually the case when BPM is driven top-down by top management. The second pattern is the orange pattern. We see that methods and information technology are very mature, while strategy governance as well as people and culture are less developed. This is a typical profile of BPM driven by the CIO. Then there's the green pattern, where maturity restricts itself to people and culture. This is typically an organization that is affected by rule-based governance and heavy unionization. Here, we have to rely on people's commitments to get something done. Many of the insights that we discussed in this book can be discussed and related to 10 principles of good BPM. Von Brocker and colleagues have collected these 10 principles in 2014. The first principle is about context awareness. BPM should fit the organizational context. It should not follow simply a cookbook approach. The second principle is about continuity. BPM should be a permanent practice. It should not be a one-off project. The third principle is about enablement. BPM 
should develop capabilities. It should not be limited to firefighting. The fourth principle is about holism. BPM should be inclusive in scope. It should not have an isolated focus. The fifth principle is about institutionalization. BPM should be embedded in the organizational structure. It should not be an ad hoc responsibility. The sixth principle is about involvement. BPM should integrate all stakeholder groups. It should not neglect employee participation. The seventh principle is about joint understanding. BPM should create shared meaning. It should not be the language of experts. The eighth principle is about purpose. BPM should contribute to strategic value creation. It should not be done for the sake of its own. Principle nine is about simplicity. BPM should be economical. It should not be over-engineered. Principle 10 is about technology appropriation. BPM should make opportune use of technology. It should not consider technology management as an afterthought. We recap. In this chapter, we argued that to achieve sustainable success of BPM, we need to go beyond the application of methods and techniques and software tools. And we have to consider BPM as an enterprise capability embedded in the corporate structure. Accordingly, BPM should not be seen as a one-off project, but as a coordinated set of projects developed over time each of these aiming to improve one or more business processes along the BPM life cycle. We started by discussing typical failure reasons of BPM programs and traced these back to a lack of strategic alignment, a weak or non-existing governance structure, or an underestimation of the role of employees in corporate culture. We then introduced the BPM maturity model as a tool to measure success. The model revolves around six critical success factors, strategic alignment, governance, methods, IT, people, and culture. And for each of them, five capability areas have been defined. Regarding maturity assessment, we differentiated between BPM maturity and process maturity. 